Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kendra and in this video I'm going to turn Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kendra and in this video I'm going to share with you everything I made in the first quarter of 2024. I'm going to give you a brief stash update and I'm going to share with you some tentative plans for the second quarter of 2024. So if that sounds like something you want to hear about, stay tuned to this video, I guess. And if you're curious about what I'm wearing, this is a sweater I got off the clearance rack from Express over 10 years ago. I have it in two colors and it's the best like $20 I've ever spent because it's still with me today. So yeah, let's talk about what I finished in Q1. The first two projects I completed in the first quarter were socks for my husband. I knit him two pairs of socks. One was in a gray color with a three by one rib stitch along the leg and the top of the foot and a contrast wedge toe and a black yarn. The specifics on the yarn I use for both of his sock projects are in my Ravelry project page. So if you want to know the specifics of that, I will, I will point you in that direction because I don't recall off the top of my head. And then the second pair that I knit for him was in all black and it has a two by two rib cuff an eight by one wide rib along the leg and the top of the foot. And yeah, all in one color, all in black yarn. And he wears them quite frequently. I'm so glad I made them for him and I cannot wait to make him some more socks. I think the next gift for him that I'd like to knit is probably a hat because I knit him a hat a few months ago and he has worn it all winter so it's just motivating me to make him more stuff and I can't wait. The third finished object that I completed is a sweater. It is the Fairy Building Sweater by Sloan Rosenthal. It is knit in pieces and seamed together, um, knit bottom up. It has a really nice cable motif along the bottom hem. But here's what it looks like, kind of folded in half. It has a very generous cow neck shaping. And as I'm sure you can see on this video, um, we had a dye lot situation. Okay, the, the cow neck is knit and an extra skein that I had to buy because I was on the verge of losing yarn chicken. Lo and behold, they did not have the dye lot that my original order was in. All's well that ends well because I don't hate the way this turned out um, in terms of the color difference, but I'm not thrilled about the cow neck. And I'm 100% convinced it's user error, like not a fault of the pattern or the designer, but I'll talk more about this pattern specifically because I do plan to make a dedicated video sharing the details. I did time myself knitting this. It is a fingering weight sweater, seamed the whole nine yards. So it took a lot of time. And this was a whip for the entirety of the first quarter of this year. I cast this on December 24th on Christmas Eve of 2023 and I didn't finish it until the last week of March literally I want to say March like 30th so <sighs> yeah this this project took me on quite the journey now as far as the cow neck that I'm not 100% happy with I will either rip it out and replace it with a crew neck or do some type of mock neck, but I don't know if the cowl neck is for me. And I kind of anticipated that going in because I'm not really ever a fan of a cowl neck, but I didn't want to limit myself and I wanted to give it a fair shot. And I will say, as I said, like the mishap with this is probably just my fault. Like I did my best to stretch out the top because 
The pattern instructs you to increase your needle size at regular intervals so that the outside of the cow neck when it folds over sort of nicely drapes over your shoulders a little bit and, and lays flat. I'll probably put in a picture of the sample of this sweater so you can get an idea of how the cow neck is supposed to fall. That is not how it falls on me. Um, part of that is because this bind off I don't think is stretchy enough. The other part is because I did not increase my needle size enough as I was going up. And I tried to compensate that by um, stretching it out with blocking as you can probably see some pretty egregious <laughs> uh, pinning out evidence here. But I'm still not 100% happy with the outcome and I don't know if the solution is going to be rip it out and try the cowl neck again or I might just rip it out and do a regular crew neck. I'm not 100% decided. More to come on this. Some fixes need to happen with the neck but other than that I am so happy with how it turned out. The last finished object I completed in the first quarter, I actually have these within reach. They have been worn. This is my dirty sock laundry basket, if ever you wondered, because I know this basket is in the background of some pictures that I've posted. So yeah, that's information that you didn't ask for. These are the Doro socks. And again, they've been worn, so Bear with me. These are the Doro socks by Emma of the New York Year on Instagram. She has released a lot of really beautiful sock patterns. That seems to be her niche. I've tested um, for her before. And yeah, I'm really happy. So it has this um, really beautiful cable motif after the one by one cuff and it goes into some ribbing along the foot and yeah i think overall it's pretty basic the the design feature is this texture at the cuff and it was really easy to do it is charted had no problems with the pattern itself although i will say i ignored the heel flap and gusset as well as the toe because I kind of just did what I normally do for any of the socks that I'm knitting for myself. So your results may vary if you follow the pattern to the T. I personally, once I got past this texture at the top, I didn't even look at the pattern anymore if I'm being totally honest. And I did try something new with my heel flap and it, it did not go perfectly, <laughs> but I tried I think it's an eye of partridge heel. I think. So I usually default to a slip stitch heel flap and gusset where on the right side rows you are knitting one, slipping one, and you're doing that on every right side row. But this, I knit one, slipped one, and then on the following right side row, I alternated the stitches that I knit versus slipped. And Maybe it's not the eye of partridge heel. Maybe it's called something else, but I know it's a thing and I tried it and I found it pretty difficult to read my knitting and determine um, what I did on the previous right side row, which would tell me what I need to do on the current right side row. Yeah, it is what it is. And I also ended up having to re-knit half of the first sock that I made because for some reason I got it in my head that for my socks that I need to do 40 rows on the heel flap. I don't know where I got that number from because the number is 34 and for some reason I did 40. I think it's because I did 40 for my husband's socks and I just knit two of those back to back. And so my brain just kind of was hardwired to 40 and I forgot to reset it back to my sock formula. Um, and so as I was knitting it and I finished, because I knit the, the heel flap six rows too long, that means my gusset was also longer because I had to 
decrease more stitches so I had a longer gusset to to accommodate those decreases which it made the fit of the foot of the sock longer so it made the heel flap super deep and the foot longer than I expected and when I tried it on it just felt really loose around the heel and I had a lot of extra fabric at the toe and I thought this is so strange I wonder if my um, sock knitting gauge has loosened up somehow but I knew it hadn't like the knit the feel of the fabric that I was making is just like all of the other socks that I had knit so for the life of me I could not figure out where I went wrong until I looked at the heel and I thought this looks this does look longer than my typical sock so I went back to my project um, notes I went back to my Ravelry project notes for a sock that I knit a while back that I know fits me perfectly and I always make um, notes of how many rounds I do for the cuff, the leg, the heel flap, and the foot whenever I knit a sock for whoever I knit the sock for. And part of that is so that I can ensure I knit the second sock identically. But the other part of that is if I refer back to it and I'm knitting, I want to achieve the same fit. And if I tweaked anything, then I'll know what I did, to, you know, but I mean, the purpose of taking notes is right. I went back to that sock that I knew fit me. And that's when I realized, oh, I never knit 40 rows for my own heel flaps. Of course I don't. So I had to rip it out and re it, but it's fine because I realized that when we were um, on vacation in Costa Rica, and this is the only project that I brought with me, and I had finished, I was on the verge of finishing the second sock, so I wouldn't have had anything else to knit on the flight back home if I didn't make that mistake. So perhaps it was a blessing in disguise. So these are my Doro socks. Again, details on the yarn, needle size, yardage is going to be in my Ravelry project page. And yeah, these can go back into the hamper. So that's everything I finished in the first quarter. I will quickly show you my two whips that I have going right now. The first I will show is another pair of socks. I always tend to have a pair of socks going or something portable and simple enough to accompany me on my commutes to and from the office. So I cast on a very simple pair of socks. I was actually inspired by the first pair I knit for my husband this year, which had the three by one rib texture. So I'm basically remaking that sock entirely because I wanted a pair for myself. So, oh my goodness. There's what it looks like. This yarn is different. I have not used it before. It is the Lang Alpaca Socks yarn. And I don't remember the fiber blend, but alpaca is one of the fibers in this, as you have probably deduced by now. And it has a lot of fuzz to it. And I don't know how well that's showing up on camera, but it is a very, very fuzzy sock yarn. And it's very soft, but it's not springy like the wool blends that I have used before. It's kind of stringy it doesn't have a lot of elasticity to the yarn and when i'm knitting it up it's giving me not a looser gauge but it's just not as plump and cozy as other socks 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 that i have knit myself so i'm fairly confident that they're going to be very comfortable and warm and cozy but it's a different knitting experience. It's not good or bad, it's just different. I have had this yarn for a long time, at least a couple of years, and at this point, I'm just really trying to work through my sock yarn stash, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So yeah, this is just the sock of the moment. And when I finish them, 
hopefully I finish at least one sock in April and when I do when I finish the the pair at least I will probably jump right into another pair of socks maybe 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 um okay and then the second whip I have to share is a sweater I have this thing with sweaters I like have to jump right into the next one it's a cardigan it's seamed it's the quintessential cardigan by church House, church mouse yarns and tees or tees and yarns i knit this pattern for my mom a couple years ago i feel like everything happened a couple years ago that can't like mathematically be true but i'm pretty sure i'm right a couple years ago I knit this pattern for my mom in a beautiful red yarn and she loved it and as I was knitting it and, and assembling it I thought to myself that I really wanted to make a version of that pattern for myself and so yeah it's just, it's just one of those classic silhouettes wardrobe staple status type of piece. So I was excited to jump in and make myself a version finally two years later. <clears throat> and I am using Kelburn Woolen Scout. Can't remember the color. I think it's like oatmeal or oatmeal heather. Um, so far, I have finished the back panel and the front left panel. And I am working on the front right panel. I just cast it on yesterday and that's where we are. It looks very tiny, but I promise you it, it stretches. And yeah, I'm just chugging along on this. It feels like it is flying by. We have Yarn Con here in Chicago the weekend of April 20th and 21st. I'll be going on the 21st and I have um, an unrealistic goal of finishing this entire cardigan and wearing it to yarn, can yarn con on the 21st, weather permitting, it may actually be too warm, but if it's not and I have this done, I am definitely wearing it. Um, and it's just working up so fast and it's not that it's working up faster than, you know, it should or anything, but the last sweater I knit was this. Okay, and I'll give you a spoiler that the Fairy Building took me over 90 hours to knit over the course of over three months. So this is my direct comparison. Like I'm coming off the heels of a project like this and then I'm casting on a DK weight pattern on much larger needles and it's just, huh, I like the fabric that fingering weight yarn makes but it is more labor intensive to knit up i do think it's worth the effort but it's always a nice sort of sigh of relief when you go from something at a super small gauge with a lot of positive ease to a piece like this that has like an inch of positive ease on me um with really thick or relatively thick yarn it's just been mm, delicious I love it I love how fast it feels like this is working up and and that is part of what is giving me the delusion of completing this in two weeks <laughs> okay girl we'll see if that happens but if it does I'll be really happy and uh yeah that's that's my second whip I'm out of practice with this. I'm so sorry if this feels a little chaotic. Let's talk about my stash. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail and you know list all of my acquisitions and okay, we don't have to do that. We don't have to do that, but I will give you the numbers. Oh my gosh, this is the picture I left off on. This is me skydiving like eight years ago if you care to see that. But anyway, so my stash update for the first quarter of 2024, I won't go month by month, 
but my total yarn that left my stash by way of either de-stashing and selling it to another knitter or using it up in a finished object is 4,852 yards. And the yardage that came into my stash, 2,755 yards. And it gives me a net decrease for the year so far of 2,097 yards. So I don't have much, I don't have many feelings about that. I feel pretty neutral about my stash movements this year so far. Neutral to positive because as I've said before, I do still have the overarching goal of reducing my stash. And as the numbers are telling us, I am well on my way to fulfilling that goal, if you will. I don't have any parameters. I don't have any numbers in terms of like, how much I want to reduce my stash this year. I just want to reduce it in whatever way that looks like. And I have made a few acquisitions. I have, um, most of them were actually sock yarns, skeins of sock yarn. And I can't remember which video it was, but it was one of the videos I released this year. I said, I'm going to cut myself off of buying sock yarn. Lo and behold, 90% of what I purchased this year so far, happen to be sock yarn. It's crazy. It's crazy. I don't know what, why my brain does that, but it does. And yeah, I've amassed um, a sizable collection of sock yarn. I do want to make a video talking about that more in detail, but I, I don't feel bad about it. And I think that's what matters. So I'm just kind of rolling with it. I don't have any immediate plans to purchase more sock yarn for the foreseeable future. Like I truly do feel now that I have a complete sock yarn collection and I don't need to add to it anymore. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts on the, the stash movements this year. Now we could talk a little bit about my plans for the second quarter of 2024. I do have some notes here. First item on the list for Q2 is to finish my quintessential cardigan. That should go without saying, but I do intend to finish it in the second quarter, hopefully in April. So there's that, that's the low hanging fruit of my plans. In May, I would like to make myself an Iceland sweater. So, the tail end of Q2 going into Q3 is an interesting time. I'm going to Iceland for a knitting retreat in mid-June. And the first week of July, I'm going to Jamaica for a family vacation. So back-to-back -back international travels, my second and third international trip of the year. This is not, this is out of character for me. This isn't normal. But you know, we're rolling with it. But the knitting retreat in particular, of course I'd like to knit something to bring with me to Iceland and wear in Iceland. Um, from what I've read, the weather tends to hover around 40s, 50s. Pretty, pretty standard sweater weather, if I do say. So I'd like to knit something that I can wear there. Not to like take any elaborate pictures or anything, but just as a way to commemorate the trip and build up some excitement and anticipation for the trip. And uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be a cardigan. And I think I'm going to actually frog an old finished object of mine to make it. So more to come on that. I won't share a lot of details, but I won't bother sharing a pattern because I'm kind of flipping between two and I haven't fully decided which one it will be. And to be honest, it could be neither of those and I knit, I totally pivot and go in a different direction. Uh, so for now, what I'll share with you is that I do want to rip out an old finished object. That's where I'll leave that plan, but I'll share more on that when the project is up and going. And then, of course, going into June, I would like to pivot and focus on summer knits. Summer knits do not excite me as much as winter and fall knitting. 
I don't get super pumped to knit a tank top in the way that I do to knit a sweater or cardigan. So I don't know how extensive my spring and summer knitting will be this year, but I did purchase a few balls of this yarn called Patton's Grace in the color black. And I wanted to make myself a black Tonight Top by Lily Kate France. It wasn't until I got home that I realized that technically this yarn is a DK, but visually looking at it, it is a very thin DK. And if I can't get the gauge for the Tonight Top, then I'll do the math to make it work and knit whatever size that'll give me the, the measurements that I need with the Tonight Top pattern. So I think either way, it's going to become a Tonight Top. Um, I have a runner up pattern for that yarn. But let's just operate under the assumption that it will work for the tonight top. That's 90%, I'm 90% sure that's what it's gonna be. Outside of that, I would like to um, make two, at least two more summer tops this year. Not because I have some type of quota, but more so because I have stash for at least two other summer tops. And I do wanna work through them so that I can get them out of my stash, if I'm totally honest, and uh, be a little more discerning in the future on what summer fiber blends that I bring into my stash and what summer patterns I actually do make. Because I cannot shake this feeling of, I haven't had a ton of success with my summer knits. I have a couple of that have worked out really well, but a majority of them I really don't wear. Um, either they don't fit me the way I want them to, or the yarn hasn't held up the way I needed it to, or they're just too hot. Even in a su summer fiber like cotton or linen, um, if it's heavy, if the gauge is maybe a little tighter, um, it can be uncomfortable to wear in the heat of summer. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I feel about summer knits in general, but I at least want to make three this year. And one of them will be in Q2 and that'll be the tonight top. At least that's, that's the plan for right now. The last plan for the second quarter is to cast on another gift for my husband. It's either going to be a pair of socks or a Musselberg hat. And that's, that's all I got. Those are my makes. That's my stash update, my plans for Q2. I haven't sat down to do this type of video for a few months now, and I don't think I miss it. I'm glad we moved to quarterly because monthly might be too much. This, are you tired? I'm tired. With the time away from this format of video, I definitely found myself looking forward to sitting down and showing you what I've been making because the content that I have made so far this year has been knitting adjacent, but not necessarily, here's what I made, here's what I'm currently making, here's what I plan to make. And so it was a nice change to sort of return back to this format, but I'm also glad that this isn't the primary type of video I'm gonna be making this year. Um, because absence truly does make the heart grow fonder. Nevertheless, thank you for watching and tuning in to this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.